so hi everyone so we meet again uh, for this chapter 13 and data lesser electromagnetic inductions I hope you are still with me for this um, uh, lectures and this is our second last chapters for this semester so I, I hope you can pay more attention to these um, lectures so I will continue first now uh, this is the outline of this chapter for today we will see mostly on how actually the magnetic will produce current and etc so the first and foremost we will um, understand what is induced emf which is uh, which this concept was actually introduced by michael faraday and then after that we will see what is magnetic flux uh, magnetic flux is literally um, an output from the induced emf itself and then after that we will see what is self-inductance and the vice versa of it is the mutual inductance after that we will um, see a bit what will happen when we combine uh, the resistor and inductor in a circuit so we will see what happened to the impedance the resistor the current and the voltage last but not least in this um, chapter will be about energy store in insu later so this is all about our chapter for today so i'm going to continue with the introductions first so literally electromagnetic induction which is this chapter is the production of an electric current this is important so this is actually the keyword it is it is actually a production of electric current so suppose i will produce an output as uh, an current as the output uh, what is the way to produce this electric current is through a cross conductor moving through a magnetic field so that's why the chapter today was actually a combination between two topics electric and also magnetic itself so how did we produce an electric from the magnetic field so this is what electromagnetic inductions uh, it's actually more on the process of using magnetic so of course because we produce the current by using magnet so it is actually using the magnetic field to produce voltage and in a complete circuit it's supposed to be produced a current and it underlies the operations of generators transformer induction motor electric motor synchronous motor and solenoid bear in mind that what we learn today is actually a foundation of generators of transformer and everything else in this list so this is very important to the modern physics now i will continue so this is magnetic flux now i'm going to use this uh, sorry so i'm going to use um, this circuit over here to show you how the induced emf was introduced by michael faraday now this is happened in his lab so michael faraday is actually a british physicist and he also a chemist um, uh, during 1791 until 1867s so he is the one that introduced um, this word electric current could be produced by changing magnetic Field. so this is actually what he conclude from this experiment so in this experiment of Faraday uh, it's supposed to have uh, an AC supply over here um, it is supposed to connect with us with a, with a switch the original circuit it has 
a switch actually but in this uh, lit in this in this picture over here we just um, assume that this is a closed loop a close closed circuit so there is no uh, uh, switch over here so it is consists of ac supply over here yes it is using ac supply or dc doesn't matter as long as we have an ac supply over here and then it is connected with the copper wire so this is copper wire this is copper wire with the number of uh, turns so in this particular picture we have one two three four five five number of turns for this uh, coil and then this coil was actually um, bind together into a magnet so this is our magnet this square over here is a magnet and then on the other side we have our ammeter or voltmeter over here to show the uh, the existing of current on the other side of the magnetic uh, uh, magnet bar so with this uh, this ammeter was actually connected to the magnet also using uh, copper wire so we have another copper wire here with its own number of uh, turns right so this magnet actually made by iron core so whatever that has a characteristic as a magnet can be used in this as a core and this part over here is called as a primary coil so whatever produced over here was will be not as a primary uh, source so let's say i uh, i have a pro uh, i have produced um, a current from this AC supply so the current will be named as a primary current and the number of coil over here was also um, named as a primary uh, coil uh, and then on the other side we will call this part as a secondary part so anything that over here will be not as a secondary so the current that will be produced over here is also cur a secondary current uh, similar with the number of uh, Cooper. Now, um, by logics, without um, let's say I'm not a I'm not a person who learn a physics, so I don't know about any uh, uh, any any basic about the magnet field. Uh, when this AC supply over here was connected to this copper wire suppose i will produce a current over here on this um, primary part now the current will supposed to be just going around this part on the uh, 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 primary part mm, i will not observe any of the current on this part which is on the secondary part that was the original uh, logic if I'm not, I don't know anything about uh, magnetic field. But then this experiment by Faraday shows that when I switch on the switch over here on the primary, the current that produced over here will also can be observed on the secondary part. So means um, the current over here that circular or in the primary part will also um, going to uh, walk away from this part and going to to the secondary part and will observe uh, directions or changing of directions for the ammeter over here hence uh, faraday's claims and conclude that from this experiment of his he said that this one this is the very um, very important statement by Faraday because uh, this is what we call as a Faraday's law. He said that an electric current could be producing by a changing magnetic field. So whatever happened here, the current that whatever produced in the sec primary, suppose can be also produced on the pr uh, secondary due to the magnetic field of this magnet bar. Okay. Now, what we call um, 
there is a name or terms that we, we, we use to call the EMF that produced over here. It is called induced EMF. So induced EMF is produced in the secondary by changing magnetic field. So anything that produced over here, the V over here, will be called as a induced EMF. So that was literally a magnetic field and induced EMF. Now let's say you were asked what is the experiment, um, or it, it can be it it, it can be uh, just like this. So you uh, need to explain the experiment of Michael Faraday. So this is the answer. And you let's say the extensions of that questions was ask you to state the Faraday's law. So what is the Faraday's law? You can come back to this step. So. It is very easy. The terms, uh, the the keyword is your electric current can be produced on the second coil using magnetic field. So the the keyword of magnetic field supposed to be in your statement because this is electromagnetic inductions after all, right? So that was magnetic field and induced EMF. So can you follow me so far? Now I will continue on the next slide, right? So we already understand about the magnetic field and also the induced EMF. What is the uh, uh, what is the uh, what is this? What is the, the definitions? What is the law? And what is the uh, experiment of it? Now we going into the mathematics aspect of this magnetic flux. So for let's say I have. Uh, surface over here okay I have uh, 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 an area over here with a cross-sectional area can be written as an A or can be symbolized as, as, as an A and there is a magnetic field that going through to this surface which the blue one is the magnetic field so as you know the symbol of magnetic field is B capital letter of B and um, the degrees between the area over here and also the directions of the uh, B is theta so the magnetic flux that going through to this area can be calculated using these equations so it is said that magnetic flux this is the symbol of magnetic flux magnetic flux through a closed circuit can be found by the product of B which is magnetic field with the area and cos theta right so theta is the degree between my B and also my A in this case right now the directions of or the theta between A and B is 90 degrees. Hence, I will get a new equations of magnetic flux because cos 90 is equal to 1. Hence, the magnetic flux is equal to B times with A. Right? Okay. Um, and then the unit, the SI unit for magnetic flux is Weber or WB. And you have to know that 1 WB is equal to 1 Tesla meter per uh, meter square because this is the symbol for the B and this is symbol for the A. Hence, after all, the magnetic flux is equal to the product of B and A. So this is one of the mathematics in the magnetic flux and induced EMF. Okay, you have to know this fact. Uh, a voltage is induced whether the magnetic field of a magnet move near a stationary conductor or the conductor is moved in a stationary magnetic field so as you can see over here we have two pictures two different scenario in this picture over here uh, it is shows that this magnetic bars will move towards the stationary conductor so this is the whole of this is actually conductor right uh, so when this magnet bar move close and put inside into the this 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 
uh, conductor uh, uh, wire I will observe some changes over here on this voltmeter hence induced EMF will produce now let's say this magnet over here is stationary instead I will move this um, let's say I have another uh, magnet over here with uh, with the coil and also with the resistance if let's say this magnetic over here is stationary and this part over here the conductor part is moving towards the magnetic uh, the, the magnet bar it we, we also can observe some changes of EMF so hence um, a current was actually produced in this uh, scenario so either both of these actually will produce some EMF which is the induced EMF itself so let's say I'm, I'm, I want to do some experiment and it is require me to uh, make the magnet in a stationary mode or make the conductor in a stationary mode and one of the, the uh, and the other element can be moved so it is actually can be produce it uh, can can produce an current or emf induced emf so that was uh, the two scenario of uh, induced current right now Mm, this is another part that you need to know because we are playing with the number of turns we are playing with the number of turns of the coil uh, if you ever watch a coil in your generator it has thousands number of turns so because we are playing with the number of turns so we need to know what is the relations between um, emf that was produced with uh, in, in, in your in your in your um, electromagnetic induction process so what is the relations between this emf to the number of turns for that coil and the magnetic flux itself so faraday said that the relations between these three was actually written as this equation okay so the average emf that was actually produced in a process of electromagnetic induction is actually a product between number of turns this is number of turns of coil so let's say i have a thousand number of turns so n is equal to thousand I have 500 number of turns, so n equal to 500. It can be changes. Uh, depends on the functions of that that uh, machines. So it is actually a product between the number of turns for the coil and the change of the rate of change for magnetic flux. So magnetic flux, the the, the difference of magnetic flux in a, in one time times with the number of turns will bring you to the average number of emf remember you have negative over here okay so this negative over here was actually the directions or the opposite directions between the magnetic flux and the current that produce okay we have uh, three scenarios over here in these pictures so as you can see on the picture of on on the a or picture of a uh, both of the bar magnet and the coil is in stationary positions so we can see that the ammeter the needle of the ammeter is pointing on the zero so there is no current produced in this case right now what if i move the bar magnet towards the coil then I will see some changes of current in a positive direction over here so we know that the current is increasing but then when I pull back the bar in a C in this C uh, picture of C when I pull back the bar magnet I can I will observe 
uh, directions uh, uh, and opposite directions of current which is negative current uh, negative i so means the current is decreasing in this part because the magnetic field is uh, getting away from the coil hence uh, what meanwhile on this picture the magnetic field is um, nearer to the coil so the current produced supposed to be highest okay so this is what you will observe if you let's say you want to do some little experiment by yourself okay right uh, enough with the faraday's law now we come to the next law which is another important law that actually uh, complement the Faraday's law because Lenz's law is actually shows the directions of your current, your uh, magnetic field in a circuit when these two was interact with, with each other. So this is actually the functions of Lenz's law. Now let's say, now I'm not going to read all this statement, you can read by yourself. I'm just going to make a summary based on this picture over here. So let's say I have a bar over here, this is magnetic bar. And then this is a coil over here, so this is coil. Uh, this is the directions of the bar and this is the directions of the coil. On a picture A, you can see over here the magnet bar, the, the bar magnet was actually uh, moving towards to the coil and this coil is also moving towards the to the magnet, magnetic bar. So we can see the directions is just like this one. If I connect this to, um, to uh, uh, an ammeter, I will observe uh, decreasing of current the eye is supposed to be decreasing and I can see that the directions of the current if you use your right hand and curl all the fingers except for that for your thumb fingers you can see that the directions of the current is upward and the directions of magnetic bar which shows by the other fingers is actually on this positions okay can you get this one right this is um, this is very important for you to understand because it is involve your right and uh, left hand okay now we move with the picture of B as you can see over here both of the magnet bar and the coil is moving away from each other so we will expect actually a decreasing of current and this decreasing of current if you once again your use your right hand rules uh, right hand you can see the directions of the current is up, uh, downward and the directions of the magnetic field is over here okay now so this is the my directions of magnetic field. Now last pictures over here shows uh, the magnet bar was actually moving towards the coil but then the coil is moving away from the bar. So we can say that actually the current is also decreasing due to the direction to the movement of the coil because it is moving away from the magnet bar okay so once again the scenario of this the C and B is actually similar so the directions of current is downward and the directions of magnet field is um, clockwise right so that was actually a summary from all of this statement over here so you can read once again this statement for more understanding or you can do by yourself uh, by using your right hand rules right now as i said earlier um, Lenz's law is actually talk about this one 
So the current caused by the induced EMF travels in the direction that creates a magnetic field with flux opposing the change in the original flux through the circuit. Now, you will pause this video right now and uh, understand what is actually the meaning of this statement by, this statement by Lenz law by going to this link over here that I attach in this video. Uh, please uh, focus on what is actually said by the lens law. Now, uh, so you did, did you watch the video until finish and did you understand what actually the objective of the video? I hope you can understand it. Now, I will explain in, a, in, in my, uh, from my point of view, what actually was uh, talked about in this video over here. If you can, if you can't understand, please watch it repeatedly so that you can actually understand what is Lenz law and how to use the right hand rules for this kind of ex uh, questions. Right. So let's say I have a magnet bar over here with the area is equal to A. So I know that the this magnet is actually has a magnetic field itself. So this is the directions of the magnetic fields right now. And the directions of the current can be in this direction and also in these directions. Right? Now what happens if the directions of the current in these directions and the directions of the current in this direction. What happened to this magnetic field, the existing mag magnetic field? Now, we, I will explain, I will start explaining from this picture over here. So let's say this is the directions of the current, the black arrow is the directions of the current, and then this is the directions of the magnetic field. Uh, remember in mind that this is actually the directions of exi existing magnetic field because this is a magnetic bar uh, after all. So I need to know what happened to this magnetic field over here when the directions of, a of the current is in these directions. So by using these right hand rules, uh, as you can see over here, this is the picture of your hand right, right hand rules the your thumb will be the directions of the currents so point out your thumb by following these directions of the current you can see over here the directions of the other four fingers will curl up like this one right i hope you can try this i hope you will try this while watching this video so please okay so as you as we can see the directions of the magnetic field over here when the directions of the current is over here will be curled up just like this one just like this finger over here hence if I uh, sketch the directions of this magnetic field remember this magnetic field and this magnetic field over here is two different magnetic field right because this magnetic field over here was actually produced due to the existence of the current itself but then this pro uh, magnetic field was actually on by this magnet bar okay so on uh, in the other words actually i'm adding up some magnetic field to this magnetic bar due to the di due to the exist the, the 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 produce the the productions of current over here so we back to this uh, right hand rules as you as we already know the directions of this magnetic field is supposed to be curled up hence if i sketch the directions of this magnetic field in this magnetic bar over here it is actually in a similar directions 
with the existing magnetic field. Can you get it? So, in other words, actually, when the directions of the current is over here, with this arrow, I'm actually adding up more magnetic field in this magnetic bar. Hence, the value, the magnetic flux, actually, sorry, the magnetic flux that was produced in this scenario over here was actually higher when the directions of the current is over here. Now, uh, on the other hand, when the directions of your current is towards this way, so once again, use your right hand rules, follow your thumb with the directions of the current, you will see that the other fingers will curl up like this one. The where, where your fingers actually point down this surface. Okay, so when I sketch the directions of magnetic field from your fingers in this area, you will see that actually the magnetic field that was produced due to the current in this direction is downwards can you get it hence we can see that the magnetic field over here is in the opposite direction of this magnetic field so i can say that the productions of magnetic flux is actually decreasing when the directions of current is this in is in this direction so that was actually what Lenslow said about this statement and the summary of this video. Okay, so I will continue to the next slide. Um, this is literally a tips for you on how to solve a uh, strategy on how to use, uh, sorry, on how to solve for lens law questions. I'm gonna leave this part for you to read by yourself. I think you will understand more if I use some examples. So we moving towards the next slide with the example. Uh, before that, uh, you need to know that lens law also said about this one. In both cases, of this picture right now magnet moves will be against a force right so let's say if my magnet is towards this way the directions of the force supposed to be towards this way and etc now work is done during the motion and it is transfer as an electric energy now that was actually a very general information that you should no right now right so this is my first example uh, in these questions over here i was asked to find or indicate the directions of the induced current when this magnet bar is moving towards the conductor this coil over here now uh, as i think this is from earlier slide we did talk about when the magnet was actually moving towards the conductor in this case the conductor is actually the coil where a uh, number of turns uh, of Cooper was actually curl up so when the magnet bar was moving towards this coil we can uh, it is observed that the current is supposed to be increasing due to the, uh, the increasing number of magnetic flux right so when I connect this circuit with the ammeter over here suppose the directions of the current will moving toward the positive directions due to the increasing of current right so 
the directions of the current will be on these positions now can you get it right so that was the first example moving towards to the next example which is still using the similar circuit right now when this magnetic bar was placed in the middle of this conductor we can observe a reading of zero for the current because i is about to change its directions okay and then when the magnet bar was actually moving away from this conductor over here you can see the directions of the current will be moving towards the, the negative directions hence the directions of the current will be on vice versa from the first part right now now so you can follow so far right now we continue with the next subtopic which is motional emf now it is similar with the induced emf actually but in this scenario we will not using any coil or any copper wire so instead we will use a conducting bar over here so before we come with the mathematics formula i need you to know what is happening in this picture over here so we have a conducting bar the the green bar is actually conducting bar uh, with the length of this conducting bar is equal to l over here and then we have a field of magnetic field over here so this x is actually magnetic field symbolized as b here this is actually the directions of this magnetic field is into the page uh, due to this symbol if it's actually a dot symbol it shows that the magnetic field is out from the page and we have our resistor here to control the directions of current and we have the, the, the uh, current over here and if you can if you notice the original positions of this conducting bar is actually over here you can see the shadow of it and then I push this conducting bar towards these positions with the velocity of V uh, the force that I use to push this conducting bar uh, was called an application force or apply force it's similar and as we know every force will have uh, an opposite force that uh, oppose the directions uh, oppose the the, the 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 movement of this conducting bar which in this case we call it as a fm so how to use or how to find the emf or induced emf that produce in this kind of scenario it can be calculated by these equations the emf produce or induced emf that produce when i move this conducting bar from the first position to the next positions is equal to the product of b magnetic field l is the length of this magnet uh, conducting bar and v is the velocity okay now how did i come up with this equation this slide is actually come with the derivations of the equations we actually start with this equation this is an equation of the relations between number of turns and also the rate of change of magnetic flux uh, assume that there is uh, the number of turns for this the number of turns of coil for this scenario right now is equal to 1 so 
I can write the equations equal to this equations only right and I know that uh, Faraday said the magnetic flux is equal to the product of magnetic field and also the area hence the new equations of this EMF is actually this one so the EMF is equal to uh, the product of B and area divided by the T uh, in this case, uh, in this case right now, the area is actually a product between the length of the conductor and also the width of the conductor, which in this uh, picture we symbolize it as a x. So the area over here can be replaced with the l times with the x divided by t. We know that. Uh, the divisions between x with t will bring me a velocity right so the emf or induced emf for this type of scenario or mu motional emf is equal to b times with the length of the conductor times with the velocity now for let's say I want to relate this equation right now with the resistance in this circuit. So just replace this EMF over here because this is actually uh, your V voltage. So V is also known as the product between I and R. So replace this EMF with the I and R over here and bring on the other side the value of r you will have a relations between your current your magnetic field length velocity and also the resistance so that was make uh, emotional emf now um there is uh, on the earliest slide of these lectures i did say that electromagnetic induction is actually a route to some applications and one of the applications is actually a generators right now there are two types of generator we have AC generator and DC generator once again I need you to pause this video and watch the explanation of AC generators from the link that been provided so understand it and please uh, know how the functions or how did the AC generation generator was functions right so I hope you already understand the um, concept or concept working concept of AC generator so a little explanation or a little summary of what is actually AC generator so AC generator is the device which converts mechanical energy to electrical energy and the working of an AC generator is based on electromagnetic inductions of course and when a coil of wire with n turns each of area A rotate with a constant angular speed omega in a uniform magnetic field B so the EMF particular for AC generator can be found by using this equation also can be found by using this equation which is it is a product between the number of turns the area the magnetic field the angular speed sign with the angular speed and time so this is actually the emf or induced emf in ac generator now such generator naturally produce alternating current which change direction with frequency of omega divided by 2 pi so this is ac generator 
Now the next applications or the next type of generator is actually DC generator. Once again, I need you to pause this video and watch the link on understanding the working concept of AC gener uh, DC generator. Sorry. Right. So that was the video of DC generator. So in DC generator. Uh, sorry, uh, so in this um, new slide, we will move forward to the next subtopic which is eddy current. So what is eddy current? This one, this is the explanation of eddy current. Eddy current like all electric current will generate heat of course, as well as electromagnetic forces. So the heat can be harnessed from induction heating and the electromagnetic force can be used for levitation creating movement or to give a strong braking effect so eddy current mostly can uh, can be found in a car or any motor engines so the magnitude of eddy current can be calculated by using these equations so this is eddy current i equal to negative one over resistance times with the rate of change of magnetic flux now we continue with the next subtopic of this chapter which is self-inductance so what is actually self-inductance self-inductance is defined as the inductions of a voltage in a current carrying wire when the current in the wire itself is changing now in the case of this self-inductance, the magnetic field created by a changing current in the circuit itself induces a voltage in the same circuit. So as you can see, our GIF picture over here, we have current, we have our coil and we have our magnet um, bar on the uh, middle of it and you can see that the magnetic field was actually created due to the change of current in this wire so if there is a change of current in the wire then there is a change of magnetic field in uh, its surrounding so this is actually self inductance so how to calculate the emf in self-inductance we can use these equations where this is epsilon our change of emf or the product the, uh, the the emf that produced in this kind of inductance equal to negative l s l is inductor uh, and then times with the uh, rate of change of current Bear in mind that one Henry, Henry is the SI unit for inductor. Uh, so one Henry is actually equal to one voltage uh, second per ampere. Now, uh, we also can relate these equations with the number, with the relations of number of turns for the coil with the change of magnetic flux. Where this is the relations over here so I can actually ratio or uh, equivalent each other of this e both of these equations so when I rearranging it I will get a new relationship between the inductance itself to the change of magnetic flux and also change of number of coil in your uh, circuit now before so that was a self inductance right so we continue with the mutual inductance so mutual inductance is basically an operating principle of the transformer motors, generator, and other electrical component that interact with another magnetic field. So we can define the mutual inductance actually as the current flowing in one coil 
that induce a voltage in an adjacent coil. As you can see, the picture over here, we have our first we have our first coil in this part, which is we call it as a primary coil. So as you can see, as soon as the power supply was switched on, the current will flow through the um, copper wire and it will induce some magnetic field over here. So when I have another set of coil, which this one we call it as a secondary coil, uh, and bring closer to this magnetic field that produced by the current, we will see some changes in our uh, load over here and there is a reading in our emitter over here. So this is uh, mutual inductance. So what I did produce or any magnetic field that I produce in the primary circuit will also uh, benefit it to the secondary circuit. And some calculations to this mutual inductance if I need to find the EMF that was produced or used in the secondary coil, I can use this calculation or use this formula where it is a modulus of product between M. M is the mutual constant, mutual inductance constant. It's, an, it's a constant number for mutual inductance times with the change of uh, change of rate for current in the first or the primary set meanwhile if i need to find the emf that was actually produced in the primary set i need to find the change of rate for current in the second primary then times it with the constant of mutual inductance. So that was mutual inductance. Right. So we actually talk about inductance and inductor. So what actually inductor? Now this is inductor. Inductor also we call it as a coil, a chalk or a reactor is a passive two terminal electrical component that stores energy this is the functions so inductor actually store energy in a magnetic field when electric current flow through it okay so that's why it is important uh, inductor is one of the important or main imp or main things or important things in a generator or transformer uh, an inductor typically consists of insulated wire as you can see over here the yellow one is the wire wound into coil around a core so this is our core the black uh, cylinder which is it is a conductor and a coil or a, a wire is curled together or wound together into this uh, Cylindric, cylindrical core. So this is inductor. Right. Now, why does inductor was important to introduce to you? Because in this next topic of our chapter, we'll talk about the combinations between resistor and also inductor in, a, in one circuit. So typically, a circuit with the existence of resistor and inductor will be uh, uh, will be look like this one so we have our switch over here and then we have our resistor over here we have our inductor inductor symbolized as this one because it is a curl of uh, wire so this is the symbol of inductor in a circuit and we have our power supply over here so when the switch is on the current will flow through this circuit going through to the resistor and the inductor so we need to know what happened to the uh, value of emf in this kind of circuit so this is rl circuit right so in a circuit containing r 
NL and the source of EMF, the growth and decay of current are exponentials with the characteristic time t called the time constant which is given by this formula so uh, the relations of l and r which is l is the inductor r is the resistance is actually bring together by this formula so this t over here is actually time time constant so time constant is equal to inductance divided by the resistance so time constant is actually is the time required for the increasing current to approach within 1 to 1 over e or about 63 of its final value if you recall uh, we actually or i actually did introduce this thing to you or uh, uh, sorry, uh, time constant is actually did uh, introduced to you on the chapters of capacitance. So, if you still remember, time here is actually a required time to approach 63 of the final value or 37 of the final value. So it is a similar definitions with these three over here right now. The difference is the calculations or the equations for the time constant in this RL circuit is, is a product of divisions between the inductance and the resistor. So that was time constant. Now a circuit containing an inductance L and a capacitance C, let's say, I replace the R with the C, which is our capacitance, undergoes electrical oscillation with angular frequency omega. So the omega can be calculated by using this equation. So omega, which is our angular frequency, is equal to the square root of 1 over L times with the C. L is the inductance and C is the capacitance. Right, so that was RL circuit. Now, in, con in summary, when we have our RL circuit, where RL circuit will be exist, uh, will exist of R and L, so the V or the EMF that co consists or um, used by the resistor is actually a product of the current and also the resistance itself so this is very um, common because this is Ohm's law but then the EMF that was used by the inductor in this circuit is actually a product between L, L is the inductance times with the rate of change of current so if I know the rate of change of current in the whole circuit then times with the number of the inductance of this inductor then I know how many or how much voltage that was used or uh, passed through this equipment now the current for this whole circuit was written as these uh, relations where current is actually a division between EMF over R this comes with V equal to IR so I is equal to V over R uh, but then we times with the ti uh, time constant over here where 1 minus with the epsilon uh, to the power of oh sorry this is not epsilon uh, exponent of negative R over L times with the time constant so this is the value of current for the whole circuit of RL remember I can only use these equations of current when the circuit is consist between R and L only. So that was RL circuit. Now I think this is almost uh, the final uh, subtopics. So this is actually more on the energy in the magnetic field because we already produce current voltage uh, or EMF and everything else so suppose there is an energy so an energy in this uh, 
magnetic field or in this type of uh, a, a circuit where it is involved a magnetic field the car the the energy was actually a potential energy so how to find a potential energy in a circuit of inductor was the actually by using this equation where it is half of the inductor times with the current squared so this is how to find the potential energy or the energy in a circuit where inductor was exist so as the current in the rl circuit approach its maximum value the energy also sorry the energy also approaches a maximum value because due to when the i is maximum or increasing then the uh, energy is also increasing right um, so the next subtopic is about a transformer so what is actually a transformer bear in mind that this is only a basic introduction to you what is transformer transformer is one of the applications for this chapters uh, as i said in uh, as i've said in a few uh, slide previously uh, mag electromagnetic induction is actually the root for transformer um, generator and etc so what is transformer and index transformer is actually an inductance device that is used to change the voltage of an AC from one value to another okay so this is actually what was transformer now there are two types of transformer one is step up where it is used to increase the voltage of an AC and the other one is step down where it is used to decrease the voltage of AC uh, transformer is actually consists of two coils similar with the mutual inductance of a uh, set circuit where you have a coil over here and you have a coil over here this coil over here was um, connected with the power supply and then this coil over here was connected with the ammeter right so when there is a magnetic field over here due to the change of current uh, this current will also uh, will also transfer to this secondary uh, coil so there is a change of reading in the ammeter then i have a primary coil and i have also a secondary coil so the relations between the number of uh, turns in the primary part and number of turn the secondary part and also the voltage in the primary part and voltage in the secondary part was actually write up as these equations so a ratio between the emf or voltage in primary to the emf in secondary is actually a ratio of number of turns in primary over number of turns in secondary now how about the relations of i and v for both of these primary and secondary coil is actually written as these expressions where the uh, product of i and v in a primary is actually similar with the product of i and v in the secondary so basically what you observe in the primary you also observe in the secondary what you produce in the primary let's say i have produced five voltage here suppose i also sorry um, let's say the current that pro you produce over here is equal to 20 emitter so you also supposed to you supposed to also observe the 20 ampere in this ammeter so that was the concept of transform now this is our last um, slide for these chapters this is uh, a very important applications of Faraday's law 
which is our generator now I'm not gonna um, explain it to you because you already paused one at one point you already pa paused this video and watched how generator was working but then once again I will uh, I recommend you to stop this video and watch again how the AC generator and DC generator was different with each other and what is the cons working concept be between these two now why do I I want to emphasize on this generator over here because the probability you will see a question regarding a generator or the concept of generator in your exam is very high so please take note on that one right so that's it for today and for this chapter please watch the video of example for this chapter for more understanding on how to use the equations to solve your uh, questions thank you